Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. So this week we're going to mix it up a little bit and we're going to go with Logseek first as opposed to Obsidian. Um, there's been quite a few things happening in the world of Logseek, so let's, been, um, let's see what's happening. Change logs, so thank you very much Danzu, um, as usual and again, for just keeping an up-to-date list of what's been happening in Logseek and the DB version and the main changes that are being implemented. So this week we've got an added the native date picker for the journals. Uh, dbgraph query function, improve the config.edn, and various different other things that have been added to the db version. And if you want, you can kindly follow Danzu's updates. Go to the current week, uh, ignore the slight typo up here, and then if you wanted to find out what the added the native date picker for journals commit is, you can follow that and try and make some sense of what's going on. Um, so that's that one. So thank you again, Danzu, for that. And in fact, we can scroll back up to last week's and we can see that they added a couple of new things. So they enhanced the capacitor integration, uh, SSL skip, user interface, a few changes. So there's, there's updates happening now much more frequently and on a weekly basis. So hopefully that means that the DB version is going to take some shape soon and be released for everyone. Um, although you can test it out for to tell although you can test it out at test.logseek.com, um, but hopefully it's going to be a desktop app released at some point. Whiteboards, if you're wondering about that, a canvas feature within Logseek, it's not available in the DB version as yet, but Tiensen did confirm in the Discord that whiteboards will be rebuilt for the DB version. Not too sure what this means, if it's just going to be a same, same, but slightly different of the previous version, or a completely different rebuild with new features and functions. So something to look forward to once the team gets developing that side um, and I guess we need the DB version to be released beforehand before they can work on the whiteboards so maybe a little bit more time before the whiteboards are released. Next up was new tags um, so Logseek it's got a lot of new features and new changes and one of the biggest changes uh, from the markdown version is how the tags are treated so as Lumen kindly puts it the biggest change from the Logseek MD version is that while the tag and page uh, references were treated identically, this is different within the DB version. And he does a great write-up in the forum, and you can see it here, goes through it, explains the rationale, the background, and then with examples, he goes through of how the new tags will work, just goes through step-by-step step of this is how it is, how you can implement them, and what it all means. And he concludes with, let's just go down, so a lot of write-ups, so thank you very much Lumen for this, much appreciated. So new tags are powerful and fairly straightforward, but it might need a little bit of a workflow change um, and a bit of thoughts and experimentation to just get it right for you. And it is going to be a little bit harder, according to Lumen, to modify your setup after you have started to use it. So just something to keep in mind, play around with it first, make sure you're happy with it, and then implement it to the rest of your graph or impl implement it properly. So that was that positive side and then a little bit of the negative side is a question of did VC money ruin Logseek? So on the on Reddit, uh, OP posted with millions in the bank, um, they've kind of left their app neglected, not quite neglected um, with, the, with the DB work that's going on, but you can say that the MD version has been neglected for quite a while um, and basically OP is just asking have they gone down the wrong route because of VC money? And he basically says, Logseek will need to target teams and businesses to earn the money for their investors. I agree with that. So that now means that I, as a single user who can pay around $10 a month, am no longer their ideal customer. And I would follow that and agree with it as well, on the basis that the investors will want some return on their $4.1 million investment. And you can follow it here. Quite a lot of comments um, about what other people think as well. So definitely do check it out to see which camp you fall in. Do you agree, disagree? and it'd be great to see some comments of what you guys think. So that was it. Um, that was Logseek. So now Obsidian. OP asks, hopefully tongue in cheek, uh, but how do you, can you recreate this sort of graphic in Obsidian? Um, as you can see, there's a lot going on. There's habits, there's tasks, project management, weekly and monthly calendar. There's a lot going on. I guess this is in Notion, but I'm not 100% sure. And 
there is a number of responses within it. So you can see here, um, lots of likes and 94 comments about, um, about it. So if you are interested, do check this one out. Um, hopefully you don't recreate it. Just use a dedicated app for tasks, dedicated app for your calendar, as opposed to throwing everything in one, but you never know. Next up is Obsidian versus Ample Note, which is the best note-taking app. So this is a Medium article that it's not just why use this app versus that app. It actually goes into the details of why the OP basically changed um, which app they were using from Obsidian to Ample Note and why they believe they got 10 hours of their life back each week. It's basically through the lack of customization, the lack of tweaking, the lack of um, trying to modify this, that, and the other, just basically using the app for what it's meant to do. Yes, you can use Obsidian in a nice and simple way, but there's that inclination to always, just let me tweak that, let me tweak this other thing, let me add this plugin or try that one out, whereas with Ample Note, you're a bit more locked down and you do not have that opportunity. So basically, um, I switched to Ample Note, haven't looked back. I can use them clearly, no longer spend time putting things up, and don't worry about how well organized my folders are, don't get existential crisis, and I do tasks. And boring can sometimes be great. So definitely worth checking that one out. It can maybe help you um, simplifying your Obsidian database, or just having a different point of view on things. And lastly, with Obsidian, is how I use Obsidian to make creating easy and effortlessly. So Mike uh, posted a video on how basically you can use Obsidian to get those creative juices going. And he basically says, once I discovered that creativity system, I realized I could optimize the process to make things um, of, to make creating easy and effortlessly. So in this video, just talks us through it and how he does it. So thank you very much for that. And we still have no news on the dynamic views within Obsidian, but hopefully there's going to be something released on that at some point. Tana, they've had quite a big week, so they've now got export to mark now. So this was something that was requested by a lot of people in the Slack and in the community. So this is great that they've enabled it. And basically, it just means that you can export your data at the click of a few buttons. It makes it a lot easier than it was. And it just basically means that you can take your notes and use them elsewhere or do what you want with them. So quite easy process. Uh, you can export your entire workspace. Uh, you, can download sub you can download specific subsets, copy notes as markdown, and various different other things. Just one thing to note is references will be represented with markdown links, so you can navigate between the files. And also images and videos will not be included in the export as the file itself, but will be represented with links so that then you can view them and download them um, separately. And basically to export, just go to the home node, click a few buttons, and there you have it, export workspace as markdown. And if you want even more information, just check out the Slack, because they go into quite a lot of detail on there. Great addition, so well done to the TANA team for that, because it is something that just avoids the lock-in um, thinking of a lot of, that a lot of people had. Tabs, uh, they've now made a comeback. So I think I posted last week or the week before that tabs were being launched for everyone. Uh, there was a rollback because there was a few issues, uh, but now I believe that they are live for everyone. So if you haven't already tested it out, do check out the tabs functionality within TANA, as it just gives you the ability to have more than one note um, or one, more than one tab open at the same time. And from my reading of the Slack, there's quite a lot of people which think this is a great feature and are using it quite extensively. So there's that one. And then the TANA update node, uh, it mainly focuses on what I've just discussed above, but then they've also added added a menu item in the desktop app to manually check for updates, some cleanup, AI autofill, and the new design for the live transcription. And if you want the full change log, do check, check this one out, as it just goes through in a little bit more detail and a few fixes. So that was TANA, so well done to the team on that one. So capacities, um, OP went in for a month of full-on capacities, so I dropped all the other tasks and apps and things, and just wanted to see how capacities um, worked for a full month, and could it, could it handle everything that you threw at it. And basically, if you just check out this link, it goes through the detail of what it gets right, why it's unique, um, what it could tweak, and things and what he felt um, in the end. So definitely do check that out if you're thinking of using capacities and going all in. And then unfortunately over the past week, there was a few server outages that happened. I think it was mainly because of just some 
miscues on the maintenance side of things and a couple of issues with the updates. Uh, so it did lead to some downtime, which was communi quickly communicated with the Discord, but the devs were on it. Uh, they acknowledged that there was issues and they fixed it very quickly. And what it meant was that yes, you had a server outage, but because capacities and the way it's been developed has full on uh, offline mode and functionality, uh, you could still keep using it. You still had access to all your notes uh, as long as you opened the app beforehand and you just kept it. So you had access to all your notes, um, so there was no real issues there. So well done to the capacities team for thinking ahead and just making sure that everyone has access to their notes, even if there are issues at the back end. And then next up with capacities was the, you can use capacities and Obsidian kind of together. So I was reading the capacities discord and I came across this post which I thought was great. So OP writes, I've been using capacities and Obsidian's so, um, both. So OP writes, I'm currently using both capacities and Obsidian. So using capacities for capturing Obsidian for just viewing and I like the graph view. So how he basically does it is he auto backup feature in capacities goes into a folder and then from that folder, um, that's the auto backup place, he just points his Obsidian Vault to that and he gets the same notes within Obsidian. So thank you very much for posting that. I hadn't thought of doing that. So if you're also in the same boat, you can absolutely check this out um, and hopefully get the best of both worlds. So thank you very much for that. Rome, there was a quality of life improvement. So the search basically now allows you to find words with the accents. So there's a quick demo that the devs put out on X. So you can see searching for resume and it pulls up even the things with the accents, um, such as makes quality of life improvement a lot better. Any type, so any type's been updating quite frequently of late uh, and now we're at 0 0.46. And within this video, it basically just goes through the various different changes to the structure, what the terminology name changes and things mean and how you can make the most out of it. So definitely do check that video out um, if you want to get a little bit more familiar with any type and the latest update. And I have to say it is taking shape very nicely. Uh, it'd be great if they did properly the daily notes function as opposed to you having to create it. A bit like Notion where you just have to go and create everything yourself. But hopefully that's something that can be worked on just to make it a lot easier because I think people are just getting used to the daily notes as that's my starting point and then I branch off that into whatever I need to go. Naughty, so Anton, he does a another great video on taking us through the latest updates. I posted last week the uh, the Naughty updates themselves, uh, but what Anton does is he basically goes through them in a lot more detail and shows you how you can use them, what they mean, and how uh, it's beneficial to what we're currently seeing at the moment. So definitely do check this out, as it does bring a lot of functionality to Naughty. Uh, next up, Heptabase. So in the latest one, they've added that you can add views and edit permissions for um, for um, for whiteboards that you're sharing and for collaboration. So again, we can check out the Twitter or X for a bit of a demo. So you can see you can share it with a certain person and you can give them full access, can edit, can view. So that's great for just control on what you're sharing. And then Tom, thanks very much for pointing this out. What the devs are working on is a couple of things, but the main one is a inbox where you can unify chat notification, reminders, quick captures, invites, blah, blah, blah. So basically just have a one single point for all of these things um, in your inbox. So great stuff from the Heptabase team. Orkanot, uh, again, great updates this week from Seth Yuan. Um, includes markdown export, divider block, and Kanban views and a few other things. And the best thing that we can do is possibly go to Discord. Once that opens up. And we can see a bit of a demo from Seth Yuan of some of these changes that he's implemented. So you can see in the task section, does wide view, creates it to cards, gives him the different options, and then he can play around with whatever it is that he wants to see and how he wants to see it. And then you can even drag and drop notes between the different categories. I skipped too much. So you can drag and drop notes between the different categories. So proper full-on Kanban board uh, experience being implemented in Orkanot. So well done, Sethion. Thymer, so another tease by the devs. And this just shows us the outlining capabilities within the app itself, although no one can test it out because it's still um, enclosed 
um, close development. Uh, but you can see it just basically goes through and the various different breadcrumbs show up and the various different notes that he's opening up. Uh, in terms of the release, uh, the devs commented, so the features are mostly locked in, uh, just grinding through the bugs and fixes just to make sure it's solid enough for, um, for the release but they can't pin down a date yet, so they're simply going with the soon. So, so whilst we're back to the soon, as opposed to a few weeks, um, which is a bit of a downside, what I did come across this week was an article on the ejectability and how Thymer aims to give us back control. So what they say is we can have our cake and eat it by making our cloud-based apps ejectable. Basically what it means is you make the backend sync server available for a local host local hosting, hosting, um, and basically allows you to leave uh, the cloud with all your data and still work with your data. So if you're interested in the background to it, do check this out. It's an article from a few months ago, um, so they were already thinking of it back then, but it's definitely worthwhile having a look. Um, just gives you a little bit more insight into some of the development that they're doing and why. So that was it for this week. So thank you very much as usual, and I shall see you next week. Bye.